Well, by, I can start by um, telling you how I got to Julia. I was actually working on 3D gesture recognition, and it was an OpenCV on C++, and it was really terrible. <laughs> I got really frustrated, so I was searching for alternatives. And I wanted to have a C interface without overhead. I wanted nice high-level programming. I wanted to have a more functional-oriented style because I didn't like the object-oriented way that much because it's not that good for code sharing, I think. And so I was searching for this language. And when I found Julia, it was just check, check, check. <laughs> Everything was there. And it's really fast and it hopefully enables me to build a nice infrastructure for doing these kind of um, pipelines where you have image, probably image recognition pipelines and some 3D visualizations and everything must be interactive because you want to tune the parameters and everything has to be really fast because it's online and that's what I try to do. So. <laughs> Well, I wrote a, um, it's a funny way of presenting it, but I wrote a little chat client actually with my 3D visualization library. Um, so in the chat client, you can just execute Julia scripts and visualize them. You can visualize any 3D data and probably soon 2D data. And I'm actually working on getting the whole infrastructure together. So I'm actually in a funny position. I'm a student as well as a mentor of Rohit. He, he's the next <laughs> he's already there in the hangout. Um, because I want to get uh, all the geometry types, I want that people all use the same geometry types so that it's really easy to do the visualization. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to do the same with the I.O. so that it's really easy to get the data in there. I'm looking forward to work with uh, Jacob Quinn on that to get the streaming of the data going and things like that. And probably with Shashi to get uh, reactive to actually stream the data, I don't know. It's, uh, we will check it out, how things will work out. So it's a lot of things. <laughs> and probably first of all, I will work on documenting my libraries in the next uh, weeks. And because right now I rewrote a lot and it's not that easy to install at the moment but it should be easy to get it there so that you can try it out. Uh, I am also looking forward to um, work together with uh, Valentin and Tim um, Brazad on getting Julia to compile for the GPU. That would be really awesome. <laughs> and that you can start um, programming in Julia, simulations and things like that and directly visualize them while staying on the GPU. With most visualization libraries you have right now, um, you have to download the data you have on the GPU <laughs> and re-upload it uh, to visualize it, which is really a big performance bottleneck. And right now, it's, my library is structured that way that it's already possible. I work directly with GPU objects. So you could just take any GPU object and visualize it, which is also great for debugging. And um, I'm actually having the library written in that way that it works with native Julia types as a, a form of abstraction. So it should be really easy to just visualize arrays of things or arrays of points are mapped to a particle system and all these kind of things. So if you actually have your variables somewhere in your debugger, for example, it should be really easy to just visualize them and without any further interaction. So that's, that was one of my focus points. So it's uh, uh, using Toxcore. Was, uh, Toxcore was read by a friend of mine. And it's a decentralized messenger API. It's really cool. Uh, it's encrypted and all this. But um, so this messenger has all the basic functionality of any messenger. But you can also execute Julia statements. <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty crucial for any messenger. <laughs> and it will try to visualize the last statement. So this is a really rough prototype. Um, I hacked it together in the last days. <laughs> so here you go. 
And this will be a little bit ugly with this low resolution, but you can actually interact with the parameters of the visualization. So you can do things like this. And you can uh, drag and drop files in here, images, for example. <laughs> And GIFs, obviously, I mean, it's a messenger after all. <laughs> um, there we go. <laughs> and, but also 3D objects and volumes. Where is it? There we go. And you can drop in whole Julia scripts and execute them. And so my particle system is pretty flexible. You can take any 3D mesh uh, for the um, primitive. So <laughs> you have a lot of that. <laughs> you can basically animate any parameter uh, over the widgets that I the primitive widgets I have or over um, reactive from Sashi. It's, a, it's really cool working with reactive. And you can have other particles, animated particles with colors for every particle and animate the positions. And what else? I have a little volume. But as well, it takes quite a bit of time to load. I'm not sure if that's because of the parser it's, or because it's compiling also a lot. It's, I don't know, it takes a long time. But So it has the whole power of GeoVisualize. So you can see this either as a, a demonstration of the messenger or a demonstration of GeoVisualize, the rendering library I'm working on. Um, so you can also interact with the parameters, <laughs> but then it's gone, so you can change the algorithm. And these widgets are really crappy. <laughs> Nothing compared to Azure, I guess. So you can have show with different algorithms. Uh, this doesn't work very well, but you can just step through the ISO values for the ISO value um, representation of this interactively. You can change the color and things like that. And I actually wrote up a 2D demo as well lately. Um, so you can animate a lot of particles, up to a million on my Ultrabook. So this is quite a lot. Uh, probably you can't animate a million. <laughs> I think I did some benchmarks. You can animate around 40,000, which is probably still quite a lot. And you can also change the color of them all interactively. Um, yeah. I have a few more, but then there wouldn't be anything for the real talk. <laughs> so that's it from for this.